Disclaimer, all features also work for Metroid Fusion despite Zero Mission being exclusively shown in this video. Thank you for your understanding and enjoy. Alright, let's get into the Sprout Set Editor. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to... We're going to crash, apparently. That's what we're going to do. We're going to crash. Alright. Joking aside, uh, we're actually going to go over the Sprite Set Editor today. And that's not to be confused with the Sprite Editor. That just handles individual enemies and sprites and uh, can change things such as their vulnerability. You can edit their graphics and palette from there. Edit their health drop rates, their damage, all that kind of stuff. We are not going over that today later of course but not today we're going with the sprite set editor and basically what that is it's just a group a specified group of enemies that you use in rooms i guess that's really the only way you can explain it for instance in this first room the room you spawned in it uses sprite set one so anything any room that you put sprite set one is limited to these enemies so that's basically how it works it's pretty simple so if you wanted a group if say you had a group of norfair enemies and you wanted them over here you just simply change the sprite set and you got a bunch of norfair enemies in here because uh, you they're usually grouped this way in the vanilla game but you can also change with mage how they're grouped yourself so you can group just a bunch of items together or something if you wanted to so first we're going to go over how to change it you go to the header editor which is right here and you just change this value set in the vanilla game there are 71 sets i'm not sure all of them are used see those ones are blank but there is 71 sets in the original unmodified game and sprite set zero also doesn't seem to be used so you can just change this to whatever you want let's change that to let's say nine and see what happens you can see all the sprites in the room just changed to whatever is in sprites at nine so let's go ahead and change that back to one and then there's the second one you can have two different sprite sets you can have your sprite set change twice over the course of the game based on the events for instance and again and this is the a vanilla unmodified game this changes based on event two which is hard mode being set now if we were to actually view what event two did you see everything's the same the placement's the same but if you were to look at the sprite ids these would actually all be red gamers instead of normal gamers because hard mode so you can really do a lot of cool things and add flavor to your hack with this feature you could uh, make enemies um get appear stronger over time i suppose you could make certain such if you're using like the bio barrier things you can make that disappear after getting a certain item just how zero mission also does it you can do a lot of cool things with this it's a really neat feature and it's not that hard to figure out you just use the event uh, thing i'll link that in the description there's a doc that goes over what every event is and what it does and then you just put the sprite number and then you adjust to where everything goes accordingly and that's all saved so that's how you change that nothing big now let's go over the big stuff the actual sprite set editor so the change sprite set you're selecting you can just use this slide and to actually add a sprite set which we're gonna do just for educational purposes let's go ahead and close that out I'm gonna click this plus button click sprite set you can either copy an existing sprite set or just make a blank one we're just gonna make a blank one and then it'll automatically open the sprite set editor for you and you see there's now 72 so slots are what enemies take up so one enemy takes up one slot now that's not to be confused with how many graphic slots or palette slots it takes up these are often considered rows as mage calls them graphics rows but uh one enemy takes up one slot so as you can see when you click add slot it defaults to the normal gamer because that's the first usable sprite the first enemy sprite rather and it defaults to graphics row zero so as you can see there's eight graphics rows which that's just a ram limitation you can't get more than that and the same thing with palette you can edit which graphic row this guy appears on 
which I will go into detail later. And then if you want more sprites, add slot again. Let's change it to that. Now as you can see, we don't see the graphics on here. I'll take give you a second to guess what the problem is. Okay, that was about a second. So as you notice this is also using graphics row zero. If we go back to slot zero, they're both using the same graphics row. And if you click apply, Mage will actually warn you of this. The enemies will not appear correctly in game because their graphics rows are overwriting each other. So simply to fix that, move it to where its graphics row is no longer overwritten. Simple as that. And then now both of these guys will appear correctly. You see Mage did not throw out a warning. Uh, so a thing to note is that some enemies take up a huge amount of space, such as bosses or these Chozo statues. They take up a great amount of room. Uh, so it's four. It takes up four graphics rows and yeah, you're not going to have much other room for enemies at that point. So just keep that in mind. Certain bosses like Krokemeyer, Kraid, Metra, they use all the palette rows. Palette, not palette rows, all the graphics rows, which means you can't add anything else without messing up the graphics. So let's go ahead and put that back to let's put that to a Zila. So as you can see those are all going to spray properly. The palettes are just shown down here. That's kind of done automatically. You don't really have to worry about that too much. That just shows uh, what enemy palettes are using what. So Zilas they use this one. Gamers are using this one. It's pretty simple stuff. And you can also remove slots. Say I don't want the Zila there anymore. There you go. It's gone. Add it back. Change it to the Zila again. Change its cracks to back to two. So as simple as that. It's Fright Side Editor is really simple to use. It's not very difficult. You can also export and import this sprite set. So if you're working on a hack and you see a sprite set that you really like, you're like, oh, I want that in mine. You can export it and then, oops, sorry, export it and then import it back. So that's pretty simple. Now, I'm, there's one thing to note. Certain special sprites use rows 6 and, or 7. Uh, and these are message sprites or the timer. Uh, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to cut take a quick cut set up a room and show you exactly what I mean so see you in a sec all right so here's our little setup this is gonna be our little guinea pig enemy let's go ahead and drag him on this pillar so he'll be around that and won't run away from us so let's see what happens this is the guy that's overriding row six and seven by the way See, we got the energy tank, and now his graphics are all garbled and pooped up. So, that's just a short, easy example of how graphics get messed up, and it's pretty simple why that happens. It's the message box sprite uses either row, row 6 or row 7. Pretty simple. It's not that hard to comprehend if you have an issue and your enemy does I don't know gets garbled like that after you pick up an item that's probably why um, there shouldn't be any other reason it gets garbled like that when you pick up a message or a message box shows um, I don't know exactly which the timer uses so I couldn't tell you um, what to do if you had the escape timer running but a uh, general rule of thumb is if you have an item in the room avoid using row six or seven it's just a good rule of thumb, I guess. So for the most part, that's really all there is to know about the sprite set editor. I'll get a quick recap. You change it in the header editor. You can change it, have it change over the course of the game based on events. You can import and export them as only as raw files. You can't do much with them other than use them in Mage. You can add them, which we will click which can be based on a copy or you can just do a blank in the actual sprite set editor you can remove and add slots you change what slot you're viewing through this you change what sprite set you're viewing through this you can edit any vanilla sprite set and overwrite it as you please that's not going to do anything it'll just affect the rooms that actually use that sprite set 
So if you change the very first room sprite set to have Ridley, um, when you spawn in, Ridley's going to be there unless you alter the room. You can edit what's graphic for that particular slot is using. And you can edit what sprite is actually on, on that slot. So pretty simple stuff. I uh, hope this helped out. Uh, next I'll probably go over actually how to edit sprites. How to do all this nonsense. It's all pretty simple as well. But just uh, remember, if it crashes, it's probably not mage. It's probably because you're using double helix. Joke Again, jokes aside. See you guys next time.